Or one for the man who reveres all life. Rich boy makes good, eh? See ya. There's no mention of weapons development on his personnel file. Yeah, his father was the inventor of the family. You build a better locking system and suddenly everybody's knocking on your door. <laughs> and can't get in. I have an update on the poetry. Yes, box. Probabilities suggest that it is a poem by Blake. Right. What's a poem by Blake? Oh, Rose, thou art sick. The invisible worm that flies in the night in the howling storm has found out thy bed of crimson joy. And his dark secret does thy life destroy. Definitely weird. So it wasn't a chance you was a Blake fan? Yes. Blake, the visionary and lunatic. I'm going to need to speak to Chandra again. Get on to Outpost 9, will you? Tell him I'm coming. Oh, no, well, no, we can't go now. Hubble's waiting to see you. You were going to fire him, I had you forgot. Yes, well, you do it. <laughs> Me? Hmm. Send him in. Hey, wait, 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 hey wait a minute, Nathan. Hey, Inspector Hubble. Wait, you're doing this deliberately, oh, aren't you? I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm sorry we can't stay and have a chat, but I've got to rush off. Look, I, I think that Chief Superintendent Thru has got something he wants to say to you. Phil, nice to meet you at long last. Hi, Dave. Yeah, how you doing, Kirk? Oh, come on in. Uh, have a seat. Screen on. How'd it go? Hubble is rubble. As easy as that. <laughs> he couldn't wait to resign. Got this, too. Well, pal Kenzie's twice the man he'll ever be. We need replacements for the two of them. Yeah, and then some. Moonbase. Moonbase, you're breaking up. Bloody security computer again. Man, security obsessed. Titan. You have got some kind of nerve, Davis. You mean it isn't? Security must be really lax on this run if they let health hazards like you on board. You managed to get a sleeping cubicle. Only I was too late. Because if you did, perhaps we could share it. Use it in shifts and uh, split the cost. Ow. Sorry. I mean, cheating me. Oh, we could use it together, even. I'm very cuddly when you get to know me. <sighs> you bastard! That's better. I didn't think a good-looking woman like you would be the type to bear a grudge. Excuse me, sir. Could you please? Oh, yeah, right. I got the impression you didn't like women all that much. Women police officers. And I'm not a police officer. Well, anymore. not unless that trip to Canberra was everything you hoped for. I've got contacts working on it. Well, like those gun manufacturers of yours. Well, they weren't as interested in me when you started buying direct. And then when you doubled the order, that was one contact I no longer had. Your boss plays dirty. Oh, he's had some ugly teachers. Him and me both. And it's not over yet. Well, is that why you're going back up there? Out there. Sorry? We say out there, not up there. Oh, you sort of know. Is that why? I'm entitled. I can still find a job out there. Doing what? I used to be a pretty good engineer. Until you discovered money. I haven't been charged with anything. Oh, you push it and that's what he'll do. Nathan will charge you. I can't help that. You really like it out there, don't you? Yes. I really like it out there. I can understand that. It's got you too, has it? I'm just enjoying the novelty. <laughs> it's more than that. You married, Davis. Is this a proposal? <laughs> Is this an evasion? I'm not married at the moment. But you have been. Five times. I told you I was cuddly. 
I'm not interrupting your work, sir. You are little. It's quite a minor matter, really. There's an error in your personnel file. You expect me to believe that? Well, it is an offence. Of sufficient importance to be dealt with by the commander of the Star Corps. We're not quite up to establishment yet. Why did you really come? Why did you develop that laser pistol? My father said it was the cleverest device he'd ever seen. It's impressive. You made it to please your father? He was never pleased. The very seldom are. Commander Spring, I have made a momentous discovery. Look, it is of profound significance to the whole of mankind. It's one of your father's control panels. But do you see it? I'm sorry, what am I looking for? The threat. I don't understand. The invisible worm that flies in the night. Passengers are reminded that in a few minutes we will be entering zero gravity. You are requested for your own safety to remain in your seats until weightless procedures have been fully demonstrated. Well, there's a man who can't wait for demonstrations. Yeah, well, let's hope he knows how to use a weightless toilet. Otherwise, that'll be one place to avoid for the rest of the flight. <laughs> One unsavory passenger, I should think. <laughs> the original concept of the worm programs was worked out by Schock and Hupp 50 years ago, more. Like most brilliant ideas, it was developed and perverted by the military. It became an anti-computer weapon. Yes, yes, I know. You, you let the program loose in the machine, it destroys it. It was like one of those hideous parasites that invade the human brain, rendering it useless and irredeemable. Like a virus. Exactly. And like viruses, the worm programs could be made self-replicating, self-defending. They could multiply and spread. A machine disease? And a classic arms race. Development, counter-development, back and forth. More and more powerful, more and more expensive. It reached a sort of stalemate which exists even now within the strategic military computers. Only they are defended. Leaving all the others open to attack. By a very simple, basic worm program. And here it is. A program chip which sits in the control panel waiting for a code message to activate it. The message is, O oh Rose, thou art sick. It then draws power from the unit, is pulsed down the linking fiber to seek out the main computer which it kills. And finally it self-destructs with the message the invisible worm that flies in the night. That's incredible. Why are you telling me this? Crimes have been committed. A railway tunnel, a chemical complex. People have been killed. Yes, yes, I know, but to what end? But soon, perhaps, someone will say, do as we tell you or more people will die. How did you find all this out? It was the last thing my intelligent listening system discovered. Before the worm program got in and destroyed it? Yes. No. Why are we still here? Will passenger Wilberforce report to the flight deck, please? Passenger Wilberforce to the flight deck, please. What's the matter? That's a security code. What is? Wilberforce. You sure? Crime in progress. Passenger Wilberforce to the flight deck. God almighty, you know what that sounds like. Nobody hijacks these things. Rich boy makes good again. How did he get that on board? I use my star cop ID. Well, I'll take it. Like hell you will. Well, you've got no official standing here. Well, your standing doesn't look so great either. I suppose you knew all along that intelligent listening project was a failure. That information you gave us was from the military, wasn't it? 
They wanted you to find out about that anarchist group as a demonstration of your progress. But we had made none. I had the briefest hope you might buy us a little time. Oh, Chandra, this is ridiculous. Suppose one of your people come in right now. I had no choice. 